Previously, I introduced vectors, norms, which allow us to quantify vector magnitude, and unit vectors, a special vector case that has an L2 norm equal to 1. In this video, I'll introduce other special vectors that build upon these concepts. Specifically, I'll cover basis vectors, orthogonal vectors, and orthonormal vectors. Basis vectors are a set of vectors that can be scaled to represent any vector in a given vector space. So we typically use unit vectors along the axes of a vector space for basis vectors. Let me explain what this means. So if we have a two-dimensional vector space, we can represent it with two axes, x and y, and the typical basis vectors would be unit vectors like these, i and j. So we have one unit vector i stretching from the origin 0, 0 to this coordinate 1, 0, x is equal to 1, y is equal to 0, and then a second vector j, which stretches from the origin to 0, 1, where x is equal to 0 and y is equal to 1. So these two vectors together, these basis vectors i and j, can be scaled to any vector in the two-dimensional space. So for example, this vector v, which runs from the origin to this point here of x equals 1.5 and y equals 2, that vector v can be described by um, scaling i and j and adding them together. So 1.5 times i plus 2j is equal to that vector v. Orthogonal vectors are sets of vectors where, say, if we have a two-dimensional space, we can have two vectors x and y. And when we take something called the dot product of those two vectors, x and y, it comes up to zero. So I'll explain more about the dot, dot product momentarily, and we'll look at a quick hands-on code demo to bring this concept to life. But what this, in effect, means is that assuming both of the vectors x and y have some length, that is, they have non-zero norms, their length is something other than zero, then what this means is that the vectors are at a 90 degree angle to each other. They are orthogonal. Something to note here is that in an n-dimensional space, there are at most, there's a maximum of n mutually orthogonal vectors. So this means that if we're in a two-dimensional space, there are at most two mutually orthogonal vectors. Or in a three-dimensional space, there's at most three of them. Again, I'm assuming here that um, all of the vectors have length. Of course, you know, if they have no length, then they can easily be orthogonal, um, but they're not very interesting. So orthonormal vectors are a special case of orthogonal vectors. So they are both orthogonal and they all have unit norm. And we've actually already seen examples of this. Basis vectors are an example of orthonormal vectors. So basis vectors, like we saw on the preceding slide, they are orthogonal. They're at a 90 degree angle to each other. And these basis vectors are orthonormal because they have unit norm. They have a Euclidean distance length of one. All right, let's look at a quick hands-on code demo to bring this idea to life. So here are two vectors, i and j, that are exactly the vectors i and j from the slides. And when we take the dot product of them, the result comes out to zero. So that just kind of proves this point that I made here, although I haven't yet, if you've been following along with all the Machine Learning Foundations videos, I haven't yet explained in detail what the dot product is. I will get into that in more detail shortly. Next, we've now covered zero-dimensional tensors, more commonly known as scalars, and one-dimensional tensors, which we typically call vectors. Up next, we'll be approaching the end of this set of videos on data structures for algebra by digging into two-dimensional tensors, which are generally known as matrices.